Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the different stomachs of domestic mammals and do a little bit of comparing and contrasting the major differences between the stomachs that we work with in veterinary medicine. So if you just give me one second, I'm going to draw up some templates and we can get started. Great. So the first thing I'm going to walk us through just as a quick revision is to cover the different sections to the stomach. So very briefly, we're going to have the cardiac region. We're going to have the fundus. We'll have right over here somewhere the corpus. And finally, the pylorus. These are the basic regions. And each of these stomachs is going to have the same sections to it, OK? So in general. Then what I'm going to briefly go over is the entrance and exits. So here we're going to have the esophagus. And out this way is going to be going towards the duodenum and the small intestine. So this is going to be the same for each species that we have here. Always the first opening will be the esophagus for us. And here food will be going in and here food will be going out. Great. So the first stomach that we have furthest on the left here is the stomach of the carnivores. Specifically, we're focusing on the cat and dog and generally they're very similar to one another. The cat stomach is a little more narrow the lumen opening into the stomach and in general the entire stomach is a little more narrow than that of the dog but both of them are actually c-shaped stomachs and both these stomachs are completely covered in glandular epithelia so these cells that make up the glandular epithelium of the stomach they're all going to epithelia, sorry, they're all going to release gastric enzymes, release acid to increase the acidity of the stomach. And really, the entire part of the stomach, and I'll line it in red, all of it is going to be glandular epithelia, all the fundus, the corpus, the pylorus, but we'll see shortly that that's not the case for all the other species. Okay. So that's really important. What's also important in the stomach of cat and dogs is that we have what we call an angular notch in the stomach. And this is important, especially clinically, if we're putting any kind of scope into the stomach. The scope is going to enter, and I'll maybe do this in blue as well. The scope will enter in through the esophagus, and you can't go right up into the small intestine through the pylorus this way because you have this notch that's in the way. So this notch is the angular notch. And I'll just write angular. But that notch is specific to the cat and dog and uh, carnivores in general. So that's important to also take note of. Let's clean that up. Perfect. Now the next stomach that we have is the stomach of the pigs. So here, all right, pig, great. So the stomach of the pig, this one is a little different than the stomach of the carnivores in that we have both glandular and non-glandular epithelium. And I'll show you exactly where we're working with. There's also going to be a little notch in the stomach of the pig that is a protrusion of the fundus. And we're going to call this the diverticulum, oops, the diverticulum ventriculum. It's a diversion of the ventriculum, which is the, the venter or the gaster is the stomach. And this diverticulum ventriculum is going to be right up here. So this will be just up here in the fundus. We'll have this little diverticulum that sticks out. So this diverticulum 
is going to be partially covered by non-glandular epithelia. And with non-glandular epithelium, I'll do this in yellow, the non-glandular, it's going to cover a small section of this cardio region. The cardio region is also a little more extensive in the pig, but it's going to cover this cardio region and part of this diverticulum ventriculum. And then we're going to have the rest of the stomach be glandular. Okay. And what we'll see actually is that there's going to be a border in between. Well, maybe I'll do this in yellow or no, in uh, let's do this one in green. There's going to be a little border between this non-glandular and glandular epithelium. And what we call this border is Margo plicatus, or the plicate margin. Okay, so basically the cells on the non-glandular side, these are all going to be simple squamous epithelium just like we see inside of the esophagus. And what we have in the red, the glandular epithelium, this is all going to be columnar, simple columnar epithelium. And this is the same as in the dog as well. And that's essentially it for the pig. The pig, sorry, I'll uh, make it more clear. This glandular epithelium will extend all the way up the pylorus as well. So we'll have pyloric glands, we'll have fundic glands. All of this is going to be glandular epithelium with a little bit up here of this non-glandular epithelium. Okay, perfect. Next, what we have is the stomach of the horse. And the horse... It's actually quite interesting because even though it's such a large animal, the, the stomach of the horse in relation to its size is quite small. So it has a capacity between five to 15 liters. So we'll call this a small-ish stomach because it is relatively small, five to 15 liters of space in that stomach. And it also has a glandular and non-glandular section and it this is actually quite a bit larger than what we saw in the stomach of the pig so again we'll do the glandular part this again is a extension of the fundus protruding over the cardia region and this is all going to be non-glandular one second great so all this is going to be non-glandular epithelium. And then we're going to have, just like in the pig, this margin where it becomes glandular. And everything under here is now going to be glandular epithelium. Great. Even all the way up until there. And again, this margin, we're going to call this Margo plicatus. And you can see the Margo plicatus a lot more easily when we're looking at the stomach of the pig. It's clear where we have this difference in epithelia and where the glands really start in the glandular portion of the stomach. What's also important to note for the stomach of the horse is that it has a really well-developed cardiac sphincter muscle. So well-developed cardiac sphincter muscle. And if you remember in the other videos that I, I had done about the simple stomach, uh, basically what we talked about with the cardiac sphincter muscle is that it helps avoid having food leave the stomach and re-enter the esophagus. And then when I had the small video that I did recently about the complex stomach, the ruminants, they were lacking the cardiac sphincter muscle, or it's much less developed in ruminants. And that's to allow food to be regurgitated and remasticated 
uh, after the initial ingestion. So in the horse, it's a very strong cardiac sphincter muscle. And this strong muscle makes it, uh, actually, it puts the horse in a situation where they're known to have a very difficult time vomiting. It would be very hard to have a horse vomit. And if it is vomiting, then you know you're dealing with a very sick horse at that point. So that's really important to also consider about the horse is this well-developed cardiac sphincter muscle. And essentially, that's about it when we talk about the horse. Um, we have this non-glandular and glandular portion and the cardiac sphincter muscle that is really well developed in the horse. And lastly, we have the stomach of the ruminants. Great. And just as a quick recap, I'll go over the sections to the rumen once again, to the ruminating stomach. So we have the rumen, the reticulum, and the omasum. These are all we're going to talk about in a second. These are the non-glandular parts of the stomach. And lastly, the abomasum. So the rumen, I'm going to put it all in yellow again because this is all non-glandular epithelia. All of that is just going to be simple, or sorry, stratified squamous epithelium uh, with papilla throughout the rumen. Then we have the reticulum. Reticulum is also going to be non-glandular. The omasum, also non-glandular. And lastly, we're going to get to the abomasum, which is the real stomach. This is all going to be glandular, producing lots of different gastric enzymes, producing acidic environment, thanks to the hydrochloric acid that's being released. And this is where all this nutrients that's been basically exposed or brought out from this very difficult to digest food that the ruminants are eating that's all going to finally meet the stomach acid and prepare it for the intestines where the intestines, we can finally extract the nutrients out from the food that these ruminants are eating. So really some main points that we'll have is that the abomasum is the only glandular part. And that's essentially it. Oh, uh, you know, actually one more interesting thing is that with the ruminating animals, the, the stomach when it is a, a calf very early in its life, when it's drinking milk from the mom, at that point it doesn't need the rumen, it doesn't need these non-glandular portions. So I'll draw this in blue. There's actually a, a ventricular groove that we have that's going to connect from the esophagus, basically make a tube from the esophagus all the way to the opening of the abomasum. So it bypasses this entire rumen and omasum and all this non-glandular portion. And we're going to have this before the calf starts to eat the difficult to digest grass, the silage, the hay, all of those foods. Uh, they don't need the rumen for that. So the body was it's very smart during development. It's able to bypass all this unnecessary section of the non-glandular stomach and just get the food right into the abomasum where the stomach can digest the mother's milk that the calf is eating. So for that, I'll just write one comment here where we just have the sulcus ventriculi. for the calves. The thing I forgot to actually mention is the in the horse we actually have like I mentioned the this non-glandular portion it has a name as well. So the name to this non-glandular portion is called the saccus 
sucus ventriculi. So it's basically a, a sac in the vent ventricle. Uh, and the ventriculus, which is the stomach, the Latin term for stomach as well. So this is up here, the saccus, saccus, ventriculi. Great. All right, guys. Thanks a lot.